Welcome back to Belfon Plays U4. We are uh, continuing our war against Novgorod as Sweden. Um, and I do think that I should probably just try to get whatever I want out of Novgorod. I don't really care what they do to Tver. Um, this was more of just a way for me to get at, uh, to uh, get myself at war with Novgorod without fighting all their allies. Um, but that being said, I do I would really love to uh, humiliate them, and that would take a lot more war score than I have right now. Um, So let's try to get a little bit more war score. We'll try taking this fort down here. Um, I'm actually, I think, going to split this army in half so I don't take so much attrition. Um, I get another claim on Novgorod, on Karelia, which is just a w three development province. Not very good. But it's another thing I could take in this war if I want. Um, looks like Novgorod wants to siege down this coastal fort down here. That's okay. Um, and yeah, is there, is there maybe some loot down here to, that I can, I can grab? Let's just park on the, this province and, uh, and try to loot a little bit to, uh, offset the cost of paying for my armies a little bit. Um, we already got a wall breach, that's fantastic. And uh, yeah, we'll see if we can get even more war score against uh, Novgorod and be able to... Ah! My barks are being attacked. Run away. Run away, barks. Uh... And yeah, if Tver would, was smart, he'd quit while he was at... Ooh! So this is a really nice event. I don't know what actually triggers this event. Maybe just having a certain amount of trade income or something. Or maybe it's just random. But uh, I almost always take the uh, trade influence... Inf bleh, trade efficiency, because it gives you the, the monarch points, obviously, which is very good. But... 130 ducats does sound pretty good for when I'm at war and in debt. It does sound pretty good. Yeah, this might be the better option because of the monarch points, but I think I can't say no to that money right now. Um, it means I don't have to worry so much about trying to squeeze money out of Novgorod and uh, and I can just focus on humiliating him and taking land. Um, Nieland's, I could pay admin points or just have Nieland's, which is one of these provinces, I assume. Where is that? This one? Yeah. Nieland gets a little bit upset, that's fine. Um... Like I said before, it's very it's a top priority for me to uh, try to get some uh, some more ships in the water. Probably the next little period we're at peace, so that I don't have to deal with all these blockades all the time. They're sieging down my capital again, which is not fun. Um, I might consider taking this army and bringing them. Uh, here to try to relieve that, because um, I definitely don't want my capital to fall. Yeah, they are they are making progress there. Um, I'm tempted to put the for defensiveness edict up there, but we'll probably make it in time. Okay, well now with them rolling so damn well there, um, let's turn the defensiveness edict on and try to make sure that they don't take that before I take Lucky. One of these days I'm going to actually look up how to pronounce all these things. Um, 
you know, not like the, not as if you know. I understand that this is you know probably going to be pronounced. You know, it comes from either a Russian or some other Slavic language up here, probably. Um, and then all this is obviously uh, Swedish and Scandinavian and whatnot. Um, Scandinavian is a language, but you know, the that sort of group. I'm a linguist, <laughs> so fuck off. Um, but yeah, let's relieve my capital. This battle should go pretty well, and we just took a looky. Um, oh, okay, that caused them to... Um, ah, that's annoying. I, I should have pieced out right then so I could have got, gotten the humiliate. Um, but that did cause Tver to piece out. Um, no, uh, Tver did give me both of my claims, which is good. Uh, Tver also took some land for themselves. They made Novgorod give some land back to Muscovy. I get some money... Cost us 20 Diplo points. Um, and we did get some uh, power projection out of that. I really would have preferred um, to piece out myself and get that uh, humiliate. But we got two provinces out of the deal, including um, what is apparently now called Notaborg. Um which is a center of trade, uh, as you can see here. So that'll bump our trade power in Novgorod up considerably. Um, so, um, especially once it's cored, and we'll give that to the burgers. Um, but yeah, we didn't gain, you know, a ton from that war, but we, you know, we got two provinces out of the deal. Um, and all things considered, we didn't have to pay that much for it. Um, if I were Tver, I would have also cancelled Novgorod's allies to make him easier to fight in the future, but that's okay. Um, let's get all of our guys back home. Uh, I'm going to take my leaders off of this these armies, because they're actually pretty good. Um... And I don't think I need to pay for my armies right now. So yeah, uh, pretty successful war there. Novgorod just rivaled me because they're upset that I took land. Um, and my truce with Denmark is up next year. And I definitely want all this land that I have claims on. Um... However, I, it might be prudent to wait until my manpower co comes up a little bit, um, unless I could pull someone like Poland, for instance. Yeah, I'm not going to have enough favors to pull Poland into the war for quite a while. Um, but they will be a good defensive ally um, until then, so... Uh, what in the world are they using? <laughs> no. Get out of here, peasants. No. I'm fighting Novgorod's peasants for them. Get out of there. Don't fight. Those aren't our peasants. Don't fight them. Alright, well, that was annoying. But uh, hopefully that army is just moving on to... Yeah. They just passed through us and, and attacked our army. Which was kind of silly, but didn't lose that much. Um, let's pay off our debt. Um, that'll improve our income a little bit, um, and it just means that I don't have to think about it. And should I pay for this advisor while we're at peace? I mean, it's def I, I love having a cheap military advisor, because that's pretty, um, pretty unusual at this point in the game, especially for uh, if you don't have access to, like, the tribes or the Cossacks. Um, which I think both can give you cheaper military advisors, um, as estates, that is. Um, do I want to hold on to this alliance with Tver? They really like me. They owe me a ton of favors because I helped them out so much in that war. Um, 
are they just going to get killed by Muscovy tomorrow, is, is my question. Muscovy wants to kill them, and they have claims on their land, so, yeah, no. Sorry, Tver, but I really think that that was kind of just a one-time dealio. Because uh, I don't want to get called into a war with Muscovy right now. So, poor Tver is probably bewildered that I just, you know, jumped into a war to help them out and then just said, see you later. Um, but that's the way it goes. Pomerania has no air. And also only one province. <laughs> poor Pomerania, they must have gotten absolutely murdered by... Uh, by Brandenburg. Um, even though Brandenburg looks like they got chopped up pretty bad by Bohemia. Um, but I do think I, I've got the relationship slots for it, so I do think I'm gonna Royal Mary Pomerania there and see if I can uh, see if uh, I can get a lucky personal union over them, which would be great. Um, fabricating on Livonian order for some reason. I guess just get more claims. Seems fine. Uh, let's try to get some more claims on Novgorod, too. We'll see how much more longer Novgorod exists. Muscovy is, you know, almost always going to eat them up. Uh... But yeah, let's also not pay for our forts. Just try to make money wherever we can. Yeah, we're paying. A, ooh, we're also paying a lot in fort maintenance because, or or uh, state maintenance because of all these uh, edicts that I've been enforcing. Let's try to cut back on that a little bit. Can't cut, remove that one yet. Saves us a little bit of money, probably not much, but actually it goes all the way up to two ducats a month, so and that's good. Might as well buy uh, diplomacy technology. How is uh, institution spread going? I don't really think we n need to develop the institution, even though we are relatively far away from where it's spreading, it'll it'll just start going, like once it goes through Austria, it'll start spreading quite, pretty quickly through Germany and then get up to Denmark and, and all that. So unlike, uh, basically if you're anywhere in Western Europe, you almost never are gonna need to develop institutions um, as far as I can tell. Gotta upgrade my unit types as well. Um, I like going for the Caligalash, okay, especially when I've got this six shock general. I think that's a good idea. Okay, what should we work on? Um, progress coring. Um, I'd like to see that in the outliner. Um, if I can, core construction. Uh, progress coring is going okay. Um, that'll probably be ready. Yeah, it's going to be ready in around two years. Won't need to worry about that yet. Let's try... Let's build... Another three barks. And then tr build a bunch of galleys. I think that'll... Uh, end up working pretty well for us. I might build one or two heavies, but since all of the Baltic Sea uh, is an inland sea, galleys get a bonus to their effectiveness. So, uh, I think it'll... I think galleys are good to build. Looks like my brother wants to game a bit. I'll tell him I'll finish this up and then get on with him.
All right. Got some ships building. Got a little money in the bank. Um, what else can I work on? You know, I'm ahead of military technology. And I've got a couple of points saved up. I might be tempted to uh, develop some provinces. Um, nothing is particularly cheap to develop. Um, I wish uh, at this screen it would show you who a province was controlled by. Um, as far as the states go, because I'd obviously be more interested, well not obviously, because nobility give me, you know, maximum manpower from province, um, I would prefer to spend military points developing provinces that no the nobility control. Um, but was, where was that? Scaraborg. Scaraborg. Again, gotta look up the pronunciation of these things so I stop, you know, making a fool of myself. Should I spend points on development? More manpower is definitely good, um, and most of my provinces up here in Sweden are not, have pretty poor development, so having more would be a bonus. I think I am going to go for it. It would probably it it you could, you know, easily make the case that it would be better to, um, it'd be better to save up the points. But uh, I like developing. I, I like to. I think it the it makes you you proportionally like it 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 can make you quite a bit stronger than you know, you should be, if that makes sense at all. Um, I'm gonna take this away from the nobility, or the throne from the clergy, and give it to the nobility. Never mind, that would make the nobility too strong. So I'll just leave it, I'll just keep it for myself right now. Um, can we make the burgers happy? We can't. Um, why don't we wait until those cores are finished so we can give land to the nobility and maybe that'll make them happy? Um, so we'll get even less, um, make it even cheaper to develop there. And that'll be good. Fabricating claims, we get a miracle, so free stability. Um, I don't think I want the papal influence. The chances of us getting a, being able to really mess with the, um, papacy at all right now is basically zero. We don't, we're, we, it doesn't look like we're going to get any cardinals anytime soon. So, yeah. Definitely want the stability there. Gives us a nice cushion against losing stability. Fabricate more claims on the Livonian Order. And, you know, we're basically moving right along in this campaign. Not, you know, knocking it out of the park, but I think it's going all right. Try to keep an eye on this uh, royal marriage with Pomerania. Um, that could be interesting. You know, I was thinking in, uh, I was in my F French Revolution history class today. And it's kind of making me want to play as France, um, which I don't. I, I don't think I've ever had a proper game as France in this game, just because they're obviously so powerful. Um, but it could be kind of fun. I mean, I know that there's you know an event chain about the sorry Pomerania, um, about the French Revolution, um, in the Age of Revolutions. If you play as France, so it could be kind of cool. I don't know. Um, okay, so all of our new ships just came through. Let's just pull all of our navies into one spot. Um, you can just do that, that by holding shift while you click and drag, and uh, you'll just select... If you have my navy selected, you'll just select navies instead of troops. 
I'll go for the yearly prestige. Um, that means we actually gain prestige per month, so we'll uh, at least hang on to what we have. Denmark is attacking Novgorod now. Um, before I call it an episode, I do want to um, start protecting trade in the Baltic Sea with all my barks and see how much that improves my income. So we were making 2.07, and this month we're making almost three ducats a month. So those barks will pay for themselves quite quickly, actually. Um, barks cost only 0.04 ducats a month uh, in maintenance. So with eight barks, eight times four is... <laughs> 32 last time I checked um, so it costs 0 0.32 0 0.32 ducats a month and I'm gaining you know about almost a whole ducat from them uh, so yeah that's gonna that's gonna help us uh, make some money Denmark is asking for access which is frankly ridiculous um, but that is going to do it for this episode. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it, and thanks for watching.